I wonder, has Mikel Arteta thought about possibly winning the league this year? Let's hear from him. The lead at the top of the table has changed 18 times already this season. I didn't know that. You didn't? No. Now you do. How exciting is it? To... <laughs> How exciting is it? Involved in a, in a title race like this. Hopefully it stays as it is for the remaining <laughs> se, se, six <laughs> weeks. And 18 is a beautiful number. I like eight a lot. Uh, it was my number, so let's keep it 18. <laughs> it's the only thing possible to look at one day and one game. It's the only thing that is possible because it's the only thing that maintains your focus and determining the task that you have to do on the day, which is the only thing that you can control. So you've never woken up one morning in the last month, let's say, and thought I could, if things go right, be the first Arsenal manager in 20 years to be champions of this country. I don't think like this, to be fair. I think about what we have to do next um, to be the next opponent and to be in, maintain the position that we are in. Still very far. It's not like Ian Abraham's from Talk Sport to try and push, push, push to try and get a reaction from a coach. But he says he's not thought about... Winning the title, Yanish. And look, if that if that's what he says, he's got enough on his plate right now, including a rather difficult opponent in Aston Villa this week, ahead of a trip to Munich in midweek. How do you handle all this if you're Arteta? Look, I mean, how do you handle it? You go for three points. It should be wide open, right? Both uh, both teams uh, need it. We're going to be talking about Spurs and, and Newcastle, right? Because, I mean, it's a fight between between Spurs and Aston Villa. So you have a motivated Aston Villa team. Obviously, uh, they're not going to take for granted any result at, at St. James's. Uh, both sides like to attack. Um, I think there's a little bit of advantage uh, to Arsenal, I suppose, in the, in the, in the sense that uh, Villa did have a pretty difficult game against Lille. Uh, uh, once again, they found a way through it as well but uh, uh, I think it's going to be attacking minded I think Arsenal fully know that they need to win this game it is at home uh, uh, obviously and we have as long as there's a three-way fight you almost have to win it uh, so I'm looking forward to a, a pretty open an attacking minded game here mm -hmm. with advantage going to Arsenal uh, because they are home um, the fact that uh, Bubakar Kamara and Douglas Luiz aren't in the team for Aston Villa in the heart of that midfield. I think it's a massive uh, advantage, of course. Uh, some issues defensively as well, though some players may be coming back for Villa in that department. At least they're training. But uh, I think Arsenal are favourites here. They're going to go after it. And, uh, of course, uh, nobody would be surprised if they did get the three points here. Yeah, Gabriel wasn't spotted in training today. Mikel Arteta, Oggy, saying he's got one or two slight concerns about that. Obviously, Saka hasn't played that much action of late. Is this an opportunity to rest players ahead of the midweek game against Bayern Munich? Or do you look at that and go, hold on, you're top of the table. This is the most important thing right now. Like we were speaking about with Liverpool, it'll be the strongest lineup available. What do you reckon? Yeah, it has to it has to go with the best players. I mean, I was at the game against Luton last week and he rested, I think he made five changes to his team for yeah. that game. That I think that was the game he thought, right, I'm resting my players for this game because it's Luton. You know, with all due respect to Luton, you know, who fought well this year, Arsenal were always going to beat Luton. So that's when he gave his players a breather. But I, I don't think you can rest players against Aston Villa because primarily because Arsenal are top of the league and they want to stay there. But also Villa are a dangerous team. But I, I do think that there isn't a slight advantage in the sense, like like Yana says, that Arsenal have had two more days rest in midweek. Villa played last night. They're going to play in, in less than 72 hours against against Arsenal. So that, that is a tough turnaround for, for Villa. So Arsenal have to use that. And they, they've really got to forget about the Bayern Munich game because ultimately... You know, Arsenal need to win the title. I mean, that that for them is, you know, winning the Champions League is, is amazing. It would be amazing, but they're so close to winning the title now. If they win all the games, the champions. So they have to look at that and think, let's just win the Premier League and hope that the momentum that gives us can spin us on the Champions League. But they could be out of the Champions League next Wednesday through no fault of their own. It might just be a great game they don't win. So they can't afford to, you know, jeopardise that by resting players against Aston Villa on Sunday. They've got to go for broke. I'm sure they will do. I'm, I'm sure that Arteta will put everything into this game and then start again on Monday and prepare for Bayern on Wednesday. Mm. And the other you know, thing is... It, sorry, Yanis. No, you know, the interesting thing is, it's not about resting, but I mean, I think some of his players gave him an opportunity to maybe change things around a little bit, right? After the game against Bayern Munich. Obviously, Kivir didn't have a great game. You know, you say to yourself, Zinchenko, but what about somebody like Tomiasso at left, left back? Because you got to look forward, you know, against Villa, you have Leon Bailey. Uh, obviously, against Bayern Munich, you're going to have, uh, you're going to continue to have Leroy Zane, who's absolutely outstanding. Coma uh, can come in uh, in that place as well. So I, I think he's going to be looking at that 
side. He's got to look at Trossard, who's 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 come and scored against Porto in one goal, right? I mean, he scored an important uh, goal uh, against Bayern Munich as well. To, you know, so so I think we look at this as as rotation, but also kind of strategic one. And it says, what about Emil Smith Pro? He had a great game at, uh, at home and last time out. So I think you're going to see some changes, but I wouldn't necessarily look at them as not your strongest team, but one that you kind of say, okay, against Villa, it makes sense. If, for example, Tomiyasu is the one, and that also could be a preparation uh, for the game against Bayern Munich. Mm -hmm. So he's given himself some options there. And the final point on this one, Augie, it's Villa, who are decent. And this, there's, there's this kind of side topic as well, because with Bayern drawing against Arsenal and Leverkusen beating West Ham, Italy have pretty much already got the, or one of the two Champions League spots wrapped up, the additional ones for next season. So this battle between Germany and England for the other one, we still don't know what way that's going to go. The way that impacts the Premier League, it's either four spots or it's five spots. So... Villa are a decent opponent, and they've already beaten Arsenal this year. So that's a decent one on Sunday, isn't it? Yeah, and you've got the Unai Emery factor back at the Emirates. You know, the, <laughs> you know, Unai Emery, he had a, a difficult job taking on for Marcin Wenger because the club was in a bit of a decline by that point, and I think he kind of caught the tail end of it. And he did a lot of good work, though, which Mikel Arteta has kind of benefited from. He lot of, you know, I think Bukayo Saka made his debut under Unai Emery. So in many ways, Emery laid the foundations on which Arteta's built this squad, you know, Arteta made some tough calls as well, you know, getting rid of Mesut Ozil and, and Aubameyang, but still, the work that Unai Emery did helped Mikel Arteta take Arsenal where they are now. So, it'd be interesting to see what sort of reception he gets from the Arsenal fans. I think he'll get a good one. I think they'll show the respect that this guy came in at a tough time and did a good job in the circumstances. So, but he will go there desperate to win and think, no, yes, this team might win the league, but don't forget my part that I played in it. And if I can get Villa a result here, I'll get Villa in the Champions League, which is would be a massive achievement. Mm -hmm. You know, Aston Villa won the Champions League or the European Cup back in 82, but a long time ago. But they could be back in the Champions League next season. That would answer the great coach they've got. And like I say, he'll be desperate to win at Arsenal to prove a point. <laughs>